Uh, my name is Konstantin Pavlov. I'm a systems engineer at uh, Nginx Incorporated. And I'm going to do a talk about Nginx performance testing and uh, all the caveats that you can have when doing benchmarking. Uh, so people uh, frequently ask uh, how, uh, what, what is the proper way to accurately uh, benchmark Nginx. And there is a lot of information online on that matter, but uh, sometimes, well, actually a lot of times, it lacks uh, a lot of details about how to do it properly and uh, uh, how, how to make sure that uh, your results are good and everything. Uh, so, yeah, it doesn't have a lot of details on that, and uh, those details, they play a large role in the benchmarking. Uh, I will try to clear some confusion on that matter and uh, give some advices on how to uh, how we could achieve uh, the most accurate and understandable results. Uh, so first thing is uh, what you have to do, you have to uh, set up your testbed environment properly. Uh, I mean, uh, even uh, the best uh, client uh, the, uh, that is written right and properly, it will be less powerful than the, than the server software you're uh, trying to uh, benchmark. So that means you have to uh, have a real, really powerful hardware uh, that is going to do the testing. And uh, if you don't have that, uh, that will mean that your server isn't, uh, uh, well, actually, you, you won't have uh, your server full, fully utilized. Um, and of course, uh, the, you have to choose uh, your, the right tools. I mean, uh, there are tools like Apache Bench, uh, AB for short. They're Okay, but uh, they are fine for um, uh, simple tests only. And if you want to do a real benchmark, you have to use the right tools like uh, WRK or Worker. Uh, and you can actually do, uh, it's, it's a good thing because you can uh, hook it up with a Lua interpreter and uh, provide some real world scenarios uh, to this tool uh, with some difficult, uh, different traffic patterns and everything. Um, so a lot of people, uh, they are testing uh, their performance on one machine, and uh, this machine uh, goes with the uh, client and the server on the same thing. Uh, the problem with that kind of testing is that uh, there will be a high resource contention between uh, your client and your server. So uh, one of the ways to separate those uh, well, uh, will be to use a directive named uh, worker CPU affinity in Nginx configuration where you will provide a, a bit mask of uh, on which cores your worker processors should bind to. And of course you need to uh, put your uh, load generating software on some different cores and on Linux and FreeBSD. Uh, there are ways to do that using a task set on Linux or CPU set on FreeBSD. Um, unfortunately, it's not available for Mac OS X, so good luck testing your software on Mac. Uh, and when you're doing network-based testing, when your machines are uh, connected to some uh, ne network infrastructure, you need to make sure that uh, you have enough resources to fully saturate uh, all your uh, environment. I mean, uh, if you don't have enough machines attacking your server, you wouldn't, you wouldn't have to, you, know, you wouldn't have a lot of uh, uh, load on your server. Uh, there are ways to mitigate that. Uh, one of the, those would be to use a really powerful machine uh, to run your client, uh, or you can just use less powerful machines uh, in an orchestrated scenario. Uh, another thing that you, could, uh, you should take care of is uh, Nginx configuration. Uh, the default one, which we provide with our packages, uh, which comes default in most distributions, uh, it's okay for day-to-day uh, -day use. I mean, it's... Uh, uh, performing good in most of the scenarios, but uh, it isn't really, uh, uh, it is really configured to uh, work with some atypical uh, workloads, like the one which you'll be uh, uh, having when you're benchmarking your web server. Uh, because all those benchmarks, they are synthetic, and uh, uh, really, uh, Nginx conf default configuration isn't tied to, to uh, provide the maximum request per second or, or um, it's kind of a real life configuration. Uh, well, tools like uh, AB or WRK in most cases, uh, they uh, generate absolutely atypical traffic flow, so 
Nginx has to be configured to accept uh, uh, that type of traffic flow. Uh, so mm, you have to actually uh, take a look at your configuration file and make sure that uh, some of the directives I will talk about, uh, they're configured the right way. Uh, so you have to take a look at uh, accept mutex. Uh, this directive uh, controls uh, whether the worker processes are uh, notified on new incoming connections uh, simultaneously and uh, you wouldn't get uh, uh, a situation where uh, one worker, processes, uh, worker process holds uh, all the new connections and blocks uh, everyone else from accepting those. Uh, of course, you have to uh, have enough uh, worker processes uh, dealing with your incoming uh, uh, connections. So uh, that's uh, w what is uh, worker processes and worker connections uh, directives are about. Uh, make sure you have enough of uh, um, worker processes and connections anyway. Uh, another thing is uh, worker I limit no file. It uh, defines the maximum number of open files for worker, per worker process. And uh, you need to make sure you have enough of those to open the sockets to uh, for, for, for a proxy, for instance. Uh, the last two, the AIO and send file, they control the usage of uh, asynchronous input output on Linux and FreeBSD and control the usage of send file system call. They're very use, useful when you're doing uh, static uh, benchmarking, stat static files. Uh, of course, it's not only the Nginx configuration you should uh, take care of, it's also the external factors. Uh, for instance, uh, some contemporary CPUs, well, actually uh, most of those, they have uh, uh, the power saving features built into them. And, uh, you don't really want your CPU to lower the frequency when you're doing your benchmarking because obviously that will skew the results in bad ways and that's not really good for a test. Uh, next thing is uh, you have to take care of uh, your operating system TCP stack parameters because if you don't have enough uh, memory resource for your sockets uh, for buffers for uh, read and write uh, operations, uh, it obviously will be uh, not, not, not good for benchmark. Uh, so if you're doing st uh, static files uh, benchmarking, uh, you need to also tune your uh, input output stack uh, because sometimes operating systems don't choose the proper uh, block queue sizes uh, and uh, uh, different IO schedules might, might behave uh, differently. It's not, uh, not always the best one that is choosed automatically. Uh, for if you're doing network-based testing, uh, of course, you need to also configure uh, the network interface cards. Uh, most of the time, they're reasonably configured by uh, your operating system, but sometimes you need to adjust the frame size uh, for your uh, machines. Uh, sometimes you need to enable some hardware offloading of checksums and everything when you receive or transmit queues. You also need to make sure that uh, your testing environment is sterile and clean. I mean, if you have some cron jobs running uh, when you're doing your benchmark, you, obviously your results will be, well, they can vary greatly. And uh, I mean, if you have uh, log rotate uh, and uh, gzip doing all, all, all of your log files, that's something not very good. And of course, you need to disable some third party demons uh, that can spontaneously take up your CPU. It's not a good thing either. Uh, okay, so. Uh, uh, you talked about accept in the last time you were there. Yeah. So, what is it? So, how do you. Uh, what is the impact of the performance? What do you recommend? What is the recommended testing for that? Uh, sorry, I don't really understand. Well, uh, I'm going to continue and then uh, in a QA session okay. discuss it. Okay, so in you obviously have to monitor everything that goes on uh, on your both actually on both the client and the server uh, you're testing with. Uh, I'm a Linux guy myself, and I prefer simple uh, low to ground tools. So for CPU usage, I prefer HTOP and PS. Uh, to check the RAM, I go for free usually. Uh, disk I/O is all right. Uh, to check with iostat and if you're having some network issues uh, netstat is your friend and if you're running into some serious trouble tcp dump is always helps uh, 
And of course, uh, there's a lot of time that something can go wrong. And I mean, most of the time I'm doing testing, there is something wrong. Uh, be sure to check the system logs because they will contain all the information your operating system has uh, uh, on those errors. And you should check mask or varlog messages or uh, varlog syslog. Maybe some other files. You know your system better usually. Uh, and of course, if uh, there is some uh, problem on Nginx side, uh, make sure to enable error lock and uh, take a look at this file as well. Uh, so yeah, uh, if you got all your data, if you got all your results after um, successful testing, you actually need to, to make sure that uh, the results you're having are valid and good to use. Uh, Thankfully, there is uh, statistics to help us out, and it is actually uh, the statistic report is actually the key to understand your results. Uh, there are a few things that you can consider. Uh, you should consider that you need to make enough tests. I mean, if you don't have enough data, you wouldn't be able to say that your results are good. Uh, you need to evaluate your standard deviation of your results, and uh, because uh, the peaks and averages are not really meaningful to understand. Uh, uh, what kind of distribution you're having with your results. And thankfully, there are tools. Uh, there are actually a lot of tools to do that. And uh, I prefer Ministat. It's a nice, handy console utility that you can use, and it does its job perfectly. Uh, so yeah, use Ministat to filter out all your results. And of course, uh, when you're doing uh, the interpretation of your results, you shouldn't only focus on uh, RPS or request per second rate. I mean, uh, your user, uh, he usually cares about how fast he gets the resource, but uh, he doesn't really care how many clients are being served simultaneously. And uh, latency, therefore, is very important because uh, the users care about it. So you should always uh, evaluate the latency also. And of course, you need to make sure that uh, the results you're having they can be repeated and they are actually consistent with uh, all the tests you're doing. I mean, if uh, you can't repeat those, if they are not reproducible, that uh, there's, the test is probably broken somehow. Uh, and probably the results aren't that of a much value. Well, so uh, at Nginx, we take performance, as you might have noticed, uh, quite uh, seriously. And uh, we do a lot of uh, testing, uh, automatic and hand, uh, by hand. Uh, we also actually have an automatic system to benchmark every Nginx uh, stable and mainline release. Uh, that system is hooked up to our uh, Mercurial source control repository and uh, uh, each and every tag is getting uh, tested. Uh, for some projects, uh, like uh, the one Igor mentioned a couple of days ago, the Nginx threads project, we actually test uh, every commit, so uh, we filter out on every comment out there. Uh, so the tests which we are doing, uh, they currently, uh, we do static files, uh, we test static files from, with sizes from zero bytes to one megabyte. Uh, as you can see, we also test with the client keep alive on and off, uh, so we can look for any discrepancies on those. Uh, we also test uh, with uh, different key sizes uh, of static files of uh, TLS because uh, that's a common thing right now, and everyone does uh, HTTPS. And uh, we have a um, set of uh, tests which do proxying. Uh, so yeah, that's uh, the proxying is also what we're doing now. Uh, there's a history of us doing some. Uh, oh, not only, we're not only testing the Nginx uh, releases, we also, the, the, the packages which we provide on our repository, we also uh, test some builds with third party models because uh, uh, it helps uh, us to find out uh, any problems with those models. Uh, for instance, we've checked uh, uh, mod security and we had actually found uh, a lot of problems uh, in this uh, uh, module. And due to high resource contention, uh, we were able to identify those problems. Uh, sometimes uh, in some uh, specific use cases, uh, Nginx could be, uh, well, was a, a little bit slower than it should be, and uh, we did uh, some one-time tests on those specific scenarios. And we actually uh, had patches out of it, so it led to code optimization. Uh, yeah, so 
that's probably about it. So if you got any questions, feel free to ask. I'm going to try to answer those. Uh, what do you mean? How do I mention what? Yeah, yeah. Tools, uh, tools like WRK, they show the latency of your overall test. Uh, well, the report of uh, WRK also contains the latency, so it has it. Else. Also, if nobody got any questions more, then thank you for your attention. <laughs>